could you explain a little bit about what we mean when we say desire <clears throat> see there are three words that we will keep using one is desire the other is thought and third is expectation right <clears throat> and this all put together is what we are calling as imagination so all this put together is what we are calling as imagination <clears throat> so imagination is something which we can you know see overall when we start observing ourselves what we can see is this imagination as a whole <clears throat> but if you look at it you know a little more uh, deeply then these three things you know can be seen one is what we are calling as desire or the feeling the second is the thought that is trying to work out the details of how to express that feeling or realize that feeling in our mutual relationship and third is this expectation which is essentially trying to work out what i have to do in the world outside in my mutual relationship so basically if you look at this desire this is a feeling feeling in me in relation to something outside then for example if i am relating to a human being right this feeling of affection this feeling of trust feeling of respect right these are the feelings that i have and which are naturally acceptable to me in my relationship with human being so i want to be with this feeling of affection feeling of respect feeling of trust like that so when we are saying desire what we are saying essentially that what i want to be you know in myself in relationship with the other thing that i am you know, relating to in this case another human being right mm. so desire has to do with what i have to be what feeling i have to have you know in me then thought means that i have this feeling i have this desire in me now how do i go about fulfilling this you know in my relationship so if i have this feeling of affection for my child for example then thought would mean that i am working out the details of how i relate to this child with this feeling of affection so how do i nurture the child how do i guide the child all these details i will work out this is thought expectation is that given this thought that i want to nurture the child so that you know i can you know, express this feeling of affection towards him the child given this thought now what do i feed to the child when do i feed the child how much i feed the child you know all these detailings is what is expectation what i have to do outside so my feeling of affection for the child that is desire how i can express this feeling with the child that is thought and in order to express that feeling what do i do outside that is expectation 
Now all this put together is what is imagination. So yesterday, if you remember, <coughs> we said this all this whole imagination has to do with my, you know, recognition and fulfillment of relationship. So now you can see this imagination as, you know, desire, thought, and expectation. That is, the having that feeling in my, myself, then detailing out how to express that feeling, and then doing a specific, you know, activity in terms of behavior, in terms of work, you know, outside. So this is desire, thought, and expectation all put together. So what kind of you know, thing that I will do outside, that is what is expectation. <clears throat> so this desire, thought and expectation put together is what is called imagination. Now you can see this difference between this desire and expectation. We generally tend to confuse between the two, you know, or mix between the two. Desire has to do with what I have to be, what feeling I have to be in, within me. Right. Whereas expectation is what I have to do outside or what I have to have outside. Right. So I have this expectation to feed the child with milk. This is an expectation. I have a feeling of affection for the child. This is a desire. This feeling of affection is in me. And this is something which I have to decide. This does not depend upon outside. It depends upon my understanding. My understanding of relationship, my acceptance of relationship. So once I have the understanding of relationship, and I have the acceptance of relationship, I will have this feeling of affection. So this is not something depending upon outside. It is depending upon me. And this is what really matters. You know, this feeling is what decides my state of harmony and happiness or disharmony and unhappiness. So this is something which is there and I can always fulfill my this desire you know, to have this feeling. If only I have the right understanding. So there is no control of the world outside over my desire once I have the right understanding. Because this right feeling is a natural consequence of my right understanding <coughs> of relationship. In fact, when we go about, you know, uh, looking at the details of uh, observing the self and you know, observing the body and the transaction between the two that we will do in the next course. Uh, we can see that <coughs> it is, you know, possible to uh, see the feeling that we have and also see that what is naturally acceptable to us is the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, and not otherwise, not the feeling of opposition or disharmony or struggle. If we can see that, and if we can ensure that every moment I have a feeling of relationship, feeling of harmony, feeling of coexistence, then I can always be in a state of harmony within and happiness within. So this desire can be definite by way of understanding that what is naturally acceptable to me is the feeling of relationship and not of opposition, feeling of harmony and not of contradiction, feeling of coexistence and not of struggle. So desire is something which I can decide on my own with my understanding that what is naturally acceptable to me is the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. And when I look at it, the details of this feeling of relationship in the context of other human being, it is in terms of feeling of affection, feeling of trust, feeling of respect and so on. 
So this is what we mean by desire. When it comes to expectation, you know, it relates to the world outside. So when I have to express this feeling of affection, right, and in order to express this feeling of affection, I have to feed the child with the milk. This is my expectation. Now this is related to the world outside. In order to feed the child with milk, I have to have milk. So when it comes to expectation, then it is a dependence on the world outside as well. So it depends upon my feeling because this expectation is guided by the feeling. But it is also, you know, decided by the availability of the milk. So expectation is something which, you know, it calls for the world outside. But desire is not something which calls for the world outside. This feeling can be dependent upon my understanding. And therefore it can be definite. And therefore I can fulfill this desire without being dependent on the world outside. But when it comes to expectation, I have to involve the world outside. It, when it comes to fulfillment of expectation, it comes to the world, you know, it, I have to ensure things in the world outside. So what we generally call as desires is what is really the expectation. And this expectation and the fulfillment of expectation is certainly dependent on the world outside as well. But if I can understand this desire, this feeling, and I can see that I have full, you know, kind of, uh, <clears throat> kind of possibility of ensuring this fulfillment of desire by way of my understanding, then I can see that these expectations, which are the detailing finally of this feeling, this desire, can be fulfilled in different ways. So if milk is not available, I can think of using something else for nurturing the baby. When you say desire is feeling, how does it connect up with the body? Is it the same as feeling in the body? Like we say feeling, um, you know, my, my body tells me something. So is how is it connected this desire in the See, When you say body is saying something, it has to do with sensation. It has to do with sensation. So as we said yesterday, we were talking about this, that the self is giving some instruction to the body and self is reading some sensation from the body. Now, this reading this sensation is giving some information <clears throat> about the body. So when I'm saying body is saying something, I essentially mean that I have sensed something from the body, so some read some sensation, and from that I am concluding something about the status of the body. Right? So self is doing this, <laughs> sensing the you know, body by reading some sensation from there and making some conclusion about the state of the body. Right? So this is not desire. This is related to expectation. That is when I decided to have this feeling of affection and decided to nurture the body. Okay. Now I'm trying to scan from time to time to study the status of the body. Because depending on the status of the body, I will decide what to do to nurture the body. So this feeling of affection is there all through. Feeling of care is there all through. And with that feeling of care, you know, I'm trying to nurture the body of my child. And, or my body, for example, I want to nurture my body. Now, to nurture the body, I have to, you know, do something with the body. And before doing that something, I have to study the status of the body. 
in order to study the status of the body, I keep scanning through the body, the sensations in the body. And from that, I conclude about the status of the body. And then decide what to do to keep the body in good health. So if there is some wound in the body and you know there is some pain, I would sense that pain when I'm scanning through the body time to time. I will sense that pain and decide that something has to be done to nurture it and to you know, uh, take care of that uh, wound. Similarly, when I scan through and I see that this, you know, sensation of hunger from body. So I can conclude that body needs some nutrition and it has to be fed. So I feed my body. I provide some food, something to nurture the body. On the other hand, if I find that, you know, it's not the food that I had eaten, is not digested yet, then I will not give food. So this body tells me, essentially means that I am reading the sensation from the body and deciding on the status of the body. And this I am doing because I have this feeling to, you know, care, take care of the body, nurture the body. And for that, I, I need to, you know, study about the status. So this we have to start, you know, kind of working on ourselves. Mm. Looking at the self, studying about the self, about the imagination of the self, about the desire, thought and expectation of the self. Then looking at this, you know, transaction with the body in terms of giving some instruction to the body and in terms of reading some sensation from the body. And then when I'm trying to nurture the body by way of feeding the body, I take account of the status of the body by way of reading some sensation. And this is what is said when one is saying that I, my body says this or speaks this or tells me this, that I'm reading some sensation and concluding something about the status of the body. So essentially body is not telling me I am really understanding from seeing or from yeah, yeah, true. Because if you are busy in something else, right, then body does not tell you anything. <laughs> right? True. So if some guest has come and you are busy, even if there is pain in the body, you don't pay attention. Right? Mm. And you don't get the necessary information from the body. Because now your concern is something else. So I keep quoting this example that when this, you know, somebody is playing football and, you know, there is a wound in the leg, right? He is hurt. But he doesn't come to know about it. Everybody else, you know, the audience is seeing that and feeling concerned that this is bleeding, you know, his body is bleeding. But he is so involved in the game Right? that he is not able to see this. Right? So there is a pain in the body, but body is not forcing or telling you know, this to the self, because self is engaged somewhere else. And when there is an interval and you know, he is free from that paying attention to the game, then he suddenly realizes that there is a pain in the body and there is a wound. And he might even faint. Mm. So all this now we have to start understanding. What has been happening is that we always thought that we are the body. So there is nothing outside it. So everything is to be explained in terms of body. But now that we can see that the self is there and the body is there and they are two different types of reality, the consciousness and the material. 
then we can see you know we can see the self what is going on in the self we can see the transaction that is taking place between the self and the body then we will be able to understand all these phenomena much better than what we were able to understand mm. Mm. when it comes to the response uh, what is the difference between knowing assuming recognizing all these terms see this <clears throat> i mean we briefly explain about this but uh, i can uh, explain little more of it <clears throat> the mean any meaning of i mean this recognizing and fulfilling we have already explained so let me recall that uh, that will help in explaining this knowing and assuming also so we said just now that you know there is a human being and i am there now i am relating to uh, this human being with a feeling of affection right mm -hmm. so this feeling is there in me this desire is there in me and then i am working out the details of how to fulfill this feeling in my relationship and then i have this expectation of what exactly to do outside right now all this put together is what is called as imagination so recognizing means recognizing of my relationship fulfilling means fulfilling this relationship right is that clear yes yes now when i am recognizing and fulfilling my relationship at the base of it when we look at ourselves in us we look at the human being and the self in human being now when the self is recognizing this feeling in relationship and fulfilling trying to fulfill that relationship with all the details of in the imagination at the base of this recognition of feeling there is some assumption about human being about myself and about the other human being for example i may assume that i am a body and my child is also a body right if i assume this then i will define my relationship on the basis of body so every time i want to relate to the child i think in terms of how to take care of his body right how to take care of his body and this is one of the problem that we are facing today you know the mother if she wants to express this feeling of affection to the child she will start feeding the child you know with something even if the child is not hungry and the child finds really difficult you know and particularly today when we have this nuclear family where there is just one or two child and there is lot of physical facility accumulated the mother is busy feeding the child and it has become a problem for the child that we can see around mm. but mother is helpless because she is seeing the child as a body of course herself also as a body and therefore this relationship is defined on the basis of you know feeding the child so at the base of this there is this assumption that human being is equal to body so i am equal to body the child is also equal to body now in the process when i am feeding the child by force what do you think the child is feeling happy or unhappy if i am forcing then the child will be unhappy yes but i think that no this is something i have to do because that is how i am related to the child and the child is you know developing reaction against me because child is not just the body it is the coexistence of self and body mm. so body is being fed and the self is being violated
So you can see this assumption that human being is equal to body is playing this role in deciding my recognition of relationship and fulfillment of relationship. Mm. Now, on the other hand, let us say that we have assumed that human being is equal to self and body. Coexistence of self and body, consciousness and material. If I have this assumption, and I'm not coming to knowing as yet, you know, I'll come to this knowing, but assuming let us understand first. So if I <coughs> look at this child now, then I will relate to the child with this assumption that it is not just the body, it is this body as well as the self, the coexistence of the two. So now I will not relate only on the basis of body. So I will think in terms of how to nurture the body, but I will also think in terms of how to make the self of the child happy. Right? Hmm. So now this feeling of respect will become important. Feeling of affection will become important. This feeling of <coughs> trust will become important. So now I'm nurturing the body of the child. So I will have a feeling of nurturing the body of the child. But I will also have this feeling of, you know, ensuring this affection, feeling of affection, feeling of trust, feeling of respect for the child. And if I have this feeling, then yes, my recognition and fulfillment will be very different. Now I will try to nurture the child by way of nurturing the body and also guiding the self. Mm. Also guiding the self. So now I'm not taking up care of the body only. I'm also taking care of the self. So I will treat the child with respect, right? With affection. So when I have to feed the child, I will, you know, ask the child, do you feel hungry? If you feel hungry, yes, this is the food which is available. And if you can eat it yourself, fine. Otherwise, I can feed you. So if I do that, I can take care of the body. I can also take care of the self. <laughs> All this education that we are giving to the child is has to do more with the self than the body. So how to educate the self? That is the issue, not educating the body. But we don't see this difference and therefore we are not able to focus on educating the self. We keep trying to train the body. So this is about assuming, assuming about the human being. So when I'm defining my relationship with human being, right, it is on the basis of my assumption about the human being. So now you can see that assuming decides for my recognition and fulfillment. My recognizing and fulfilling. Now, if you can see, <laughs> go a little, you know, uh, kind of deeper. You can see that this assuming can be based on knowing things or assuming about things without knowing. <clears throat> so take this example of human being. Last few sessions, we are trying to understand human being. Right? Understanding human being by our own process of self-exploration. Right? So we kind of, you know, made certain proposals about human being. Right? And each one of you are trying to verify it through your process of self-investigation, through your process of self-exploration. And when you are doing it, you are able to see these things directly. You can see that there is an imagination going on in the self. Right? This activity of the self, desire, thought and expectation going on in you and it is continuous. So this is something which you can see directly. You can see directly by observation. Similarly, you can see that the body is there and you are taking some activity from 
the body, like asking the body to walk, to eat, all those things. So all this you can see by direct observation. So this is something which you can see, you know, and you know, observe and see and then understand. So now we can explore and see that human being is not just the body, it is also the body, but it is also the self and it is the coexistence of the two. So there is this world of consciousness and there is this world of material. The self relates to this world of consciousness and the body relates to this world of material. And we can look at the need of the self and the need of the body. You know, we can see that there are two different types of needs and that we, they can be fulfilled differently. Similarly, we can see the activities of the self and the activity of the body. We can see that the response of the body and the response of the self are different. All this can be, you know, seen, understood, known by direct observation, by direct, you know, self-investigation, self-exploration. So this is what we are calling as knowing. And then we will see, slowly, we'll see that this, you know, everything that is there in this existence, in this nature, is in relationship, you know, with everything else. So that is something, you know, more which we have to see as we go along, that everything is in relationship. And ultimately, you know, everything is related to the whole existence. When I can see this, I can see this reality in its completeness. But presently, when we are observing the human being and trying to see all these things that we have mentioned in the last session, uh, we are essentially trying to study this you know, reality directly by direct observation. So this self-exploration, this self-investigation that we are talking about is essentially this you know, opening of this process of direct observation. Direct observation by the self of the reality where I can see the reality in its details. That is what we are saying, reality as it is and reality in its completeness. That is what we are calling is knowing. Um, once I know... So now we can see what is recognizing and what is fulfilling. Then what is the assuming which provides the basis for recognizing and fulfilling. And this assuming can be on the basis of knowing or without knowing. If we have this assuming with knowing, then we are in a good you know, state, very safe condition. If we have assuming without knowing, then we are running the risk, running the risk of going wrong and getting into trouble. Yes. So assuming means that I don't know. Now when I know, then uh, why do we say knowing, assuming? Recognizing, fulfilling. If I know, then why would I need to assume? Yeah, I mean, I would say that this assuming here is used in the sense of acceptance. Mm. I'm accepting things. And this accepting is maybe with, uh, with knowing or without knowing, you know. So something is prevalent in the society, for example. Something is taught, you know, in the process of education to me. Now, I've not investigated, I've not explored, but I've accepted it as true, right, on the basis of what my parents said or what my teacher said, what my colleagues said. Right? So this is assuming is, you know, uh, acceptance, basically, accepting it. Okay. So I may accept with knowing, right, or I may accept without knowing, you know, just by the external influence. So assuming here is used in that sense. So there can be acceptance without knowing, there can be acceptance on the basis of knowing. And when it is an acceptance without knowing on the basis of the influence from the other outside, then I'm not sure and I'm likely to get into trouble. So it is good to get proposal from outside, 
but it is not good to take things from outside as given without understanding it without knowing it without exploring within without investigating within and that is why we are saying right from the beginning and that you know whatever is said here is a proposal and you can you know explore investigate and verify for yourself and that is what you would like to do that's what we ask what will be your natural acceptance to explore yourself and understand or just take it you know as given as a preconditioning mm. we had uh, talked about definite conduct earlier but any um, uh, linking of that with this knowing assuming if you can just uh, briefly talk about that yeah i was just mentioning that if assuming is based on knowing then we can see that when i see the reality as it is in its completeness this knowledge is definite when this knowing is definite my acceptance which is based on knowing based on knowledge will also be definite if my acceptance my assuming is definite then my recognition of relationship on the basis of this acceptance is assuming will also be definite and therefore my fulfillment will also become definite as a result my conduct will be definite on the other hand if my acceptance my assuming is based on the influence of outside then i cannot be definite about my assuming my acceptance today there is one set of beliefs predominant in this society right so my assuming is you know my acceptance is influenced by it tomorrow something else comes right mm. and i might get you know influenced by that and therefore my assumption will change therefore my recognition will change and my fulfillment will change so if there is assuming without knowing acceptance without knowing then it is likely to change so there is no definiteness in this assuming in this acceptance and therefore there is no definiteness in the recognition and fulfillment of my relationship therefore there is no definiteness in the conduct so if you look at the people you know not having any definite conduct they keep change, if it keeps changing then their conduct you know is changing because of their change in the assumption interestingly today when you you know look at the people the way be, they they behave the same person you know when he is behaving with the you know, boss this you know, kind of for example if you are there with your head of the department you know you behave in one manner when you are with the you know sweeper you know the housekeeping staff you behave in a very different manner now what is happening what is happening there that you are you know very soft and very leading you know when it comes to your head or the director but we are you are very arrogant when it comes to your housekeeping staff so if somebody is observing from outside he will be very surprised to see that you know are you the same person now this is happening because i have one set of assumption about the human being you know relating to boss or to the head and another set of assumption about this housekeeper you know as a human being so i have two different set of assumption about human being right? 
the one who is senior and the one who is junior. And therefore, my recognition and fulfillment is different with them. So my conduct is not definite. Can you see that? Yes. So, um, um, the conduct is diff different, uh, but a lot of times we feel that um, uh, people who are not really educated, they don't listen, so you have to shout at them. Is that also considered an assumption? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you really study as to who is listening more to you, your director, your head, or your housekeeping staff, <laughs> but you have certain set of assumption under which you think that this director, even he has given me time to meet, that is enough. <laughs> True. Right. But when it comes to this house casing staff, you think that, you know, whatever you order, he has to do. Mm. Right. So if you are sitting and doing something on your laptop or your computer, he is expected to come and wait, you know, till you leave the room. And as soon as you leave the room and by the time you come back, he should clean your room. So he is giving time to you, he is paying attention to what you are saying. But then you want, you have this kind of expectation that he has to keep waiting, you know, because you are doing something very serious. At least you think that it is very serious <coughs> and very important. But you don't think the same way, you know, when you go to the meet, go to meet your director, that your time is being wasted and he's not even calling you. Mm. Um, very interesting, you know, very different set of assumptions. <laughs> and not only with, the, I took this example of director and this housekeeping staff because it is very contrast. But this is the case with every, you know, human being. You have defined so many sets of human beings. And you have different sets of assumptions about this different set of human beings. And therefore, your behavior will keep changing, you know, from one set to the other set. This is all psychology, you know, which we have to really study slowly. So this should be taught in psychology which we are not doing today. <laughs> Just one more thing that I was thinking about, uh, sorry to go back about the activities, that uh, we say we feel from the heart, so the feelings in the heart, but when we think, we think with the brain. So, can you just comment on that a little bit? See, it is simple, you know, when we think that human being is equal to body, then everything, you know, that is happening in human being has to be placed somewhere in the body. <laughs> right? There is no way out. So, when it comes to feeling, you have to place it in the heart. When it comes to thinking, you have to place it in the brain and so on. So when you are confused and fearful, you know, you say you are nervous. So your nerves are, you know, in trouble. So all that we do because you know, this is not clear, not clear about, you know, this distinction between the self and the body, and, you know, as to what is happening in the self. 
But there is, I mean, something very interesting. If I can see this self and the body and the interaction between the two, then we can see that this feeling basically is at the level of self. This thought is also at the level of self. Right. This confusion, nervousness, what we are calling, is also at the level of self. Right. And it is the decision of the self whether reflect this at the level of body or not to reflect this at the level of body. Right? Whether to give instruction to the body corresponding to this state of the self or not to give instruction to the body corresponding to this state of the self. But if the self is not aware and it starts giving instruction to the body, then the point is that how does it reflect? That we can study. That if this issue of feeling is there and if it is communicated to the body, it will have a major effect at the level of heart. If it is a matter of thinking, it has a major effect at the level of brain and so on. So what we are studying is this effect on this body. And we presently have no way to look at the self, study the self. So the self is merged with the body. Mm -hmm. It is so identified with the body that it is not able to deal itself with, you know, with deal itself separately and decide when to give instruction to the body and when not to give instruction to the body. So unnecessarily many times it is giving instruction to the body which was not required. For example, if I am confused what to do, what not to do, there is no point to give instruction to the body because the body cannot do anything. But by giving very opposite instructions one after the other, I am troubling the body. <laughs> right. So if I had a feeling of fear in me, right, why do I need to you know, convey this to the body? It will have effect on the breathing of the body. It will have effect on the beating of the heart of the body which is quite unnecessary. So if I am, you know, having a feeling of opposition and therefore I am having a feeling of fear with something outside, I have to set my feeling right at the level of self. Right? There is no point giving instruction to the body. But because we are so unconscious about this, we keep giving this information to the body and the body, you know, has problem. So the heart rate is increasing, the breathing is becoming abnormal. You know, and when heart rate increases, then there is problem in the heart. Now it has become a physical problem. It was a mental problem. And I endlessly transferred it to the body. And now it has become a problem of the body. So if I am conscious of myself, and if I find that Yes, I am in a feeling, I am with a feeling of opposition and therefore a feeling of fear. Right? Then I would like to settle that at the level of self. Why transfer this to the body? I will settle this, that this feeling of opposition is not naturally acceptable to me. Something unnatural, which is making me, you know, in contradiction and unhappiness. So let me settle it down. Instead of having this feeling of opposition, let me have this feeling of relationship. And when I'm settling at the level of self, I will not pass instruction to the body. So this heartbeat will not increase. The breathing will not become abnormal. While I'm going through this process of you know, self-investigation, self-exploration and self evolution you know, a correction. Right? So yes. this has to be studied, you know, this has to be understood. And I was saying this psychology has to do all this. And we are not doing it in the name of psychology today. So we Actually, should be able we don't to pay study much attention. 
we should be able to study the self we should be able to study the body we should be able to study the transaction between the two right then we can do proper psychology yes you are saying something no i was just saying that it's true that we don't really pay much attention so when i get angry if my breathing is becoming like i, I mean i think that it just happens that i don't voluntarily do this i don't give instructions to yes what is to happen that is what we think mm. that is what we think and uh, if you remember i was mentioning one of these experiments you know and it was developed very to a very fineness you know in one of the systems in buddhism of course in also many other traditions that when <clears throat> you have to uh, when your breathing becomes abnormal right your heart beat becomes abnormal you don't have to take the medicine you know just do one simple thing start observing the breathing start observing your breath and one more condition that you observe it with equanimity right equanimity of the mind of the self that is you are not reacting to this breathing you know becoming abnormal you are just observing it observing it with doubt that reaction with and with equanimity now this had become abnormal because you were reacting at the level of self the moment you started observing observing without reaction with equanimity your reaction is over right when you observe with equanimity without reaction then you will see that the breathing becomes normal the pace of the breathing becomes normal automatically without doing anything without taking any you know medicine similarly your heart beat will become normal you have not done anything physical right and your body is becoming normal now if you look back you can see that the body was becoming abnormal because you were giving instructions you know to the body right from the state of the self which was that of a reaction and you were doing it unconsciously you were not aware of it but the body had an effect of your state of the self now when you have changed the state of the self the state of the body is changing because you are now not giving that kind of instruction so breathing will become normal and interesting thing is that when breathing becomes normal now it will become very difficult for you to you know have that anger because they are certainly in coexistence you know interconnected so you have interrupted your own state of being of the self with that your interaction with the body has changed so now body has become normal right. now next time you get angry okay the next moment it may be you are getting angry at the level of self and you are trying to give this instruction to the body right the body is already in a normal condition so you get this reminder that you know you are unnecessarily disturbing the body i mean in this example it looks like uh, uh, the state of the body is dictating the state of the self see there is no existence the uh, yeah this yeah so that means i mean this appears that uh, if we you know make the body normal and all the thinking will become normal yeah so what we are saying here is that there is this interaction between the two and if the self is thinking that it is the body and it is you know 
getting influenced by the state of the body. This is what will happen. But what I said was that if you are observing the body and if the body becomes normal and at one point of time you become abnormal, then when you are, you know, giving that instruction to the body based on your abnormality and if the body is in a normal state, right, you will get this hint that body is already in a normal state and by giving this instruction, it will make the body abnormal. So ultimately, the decision has to be taken by you. The state of the body will help you to see what you are doing. It will not decide. Okay. But today, because you think that you are the body, so you are so tied to this body that you you know, feel that, yes, body is deciding. But body is not deciding. Body is only giving you a, you know, kind of uh, reference about the status of yourself. Yes. So you may pay attention or you may not pay attention. So you might get angry if you are Sanskar is such that it is saying that this is one condition I cannot tolerate. So you get angry and you start reflecting this in the body. So you are not dictated by the body, but you are always, you know, taking input from the body. So you are getting some reference from the body, which may be useful for you. If you understand this self and if you are working at the level of self, then this information will be useful. But if you are not working at the level of self and you think that you are the body, then this body will start dictating the self. That is what is happening. Yes, so far we have discussed only these two things. Uh, what is on the screen now? The human being is coexistence of self and body. And that... Uh, um, the difference between the self and the body is this, is this knowing and assuming part. Uh, yes, in terms of response. In terms of response, yeah. The self has this knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling. Whereas the body has only recognizing and fulfilling. <laughs> right. So with that, uh, we have, uh, you know, f five more lectures about all this. So we'll go into more detail in that. Yes. Uh, yeah. True. Uh, sir, whenever we do, say proposal for natural acceptance, um, yes. how do you respond? Uh, uh, that is what is my exploration, sir. Just uh, I was thinking, sir. I think, yes. sir, uh, we have to uh, plan for the bodies to control uh, these activities. Uh, you know, the the way of meditation, we have to make so that the calmness in mind will, will come and as you told sir the, the in this uh, session sir as to control you know, the anger you have to watch your breath so unless and until we do meditation that type of feeling will will, will uh, that type of exercise is required is it sir then secondly sir uh, sir uh, to make uh, the mind more active sir brain sometimes uh, the brain uh, is it the role of the say, some harmonious music, sir? As you, we have observed that during session also, we play some harmonious music. So, is it that the role of the music also plays you know, to make balance on the brain, to make calmness on the brain? Because sometimes we see that, uh, say, in psychological uh, disorder for patients, uh, this um, music therapy is also used. So, the, is it true, sir? Uh, kindly uh, reflect, sir, something. Right. See, as it stands, most of us go by this assumption that self is equal to the body. And therefore, human being is equal to body. So most of the time, their self is influenced by the body. If that is the case, and you are beginning to investigate, explore, then in the tradition, 
there is a lot of you know experiment being conducted and few of these experiments has to do with this idea of what you are saying that you calm down your activity of the body then at least you know it will calm down the activity of the self which is under the influence of the body sir and this is an important thing you know that has been done in the past in many many traditions for example it says keep your body in a particular posture it, so if you keep it in a particular posture it restricts the movement of the body and now your self is because you know influenced by the body so when the body is put to rest okay your self has very little choice to work so there is a likelihood that self may also start getting calm down similarly when you know you said that close your eyes when you close your eyes you know the amount of information that you were getting from outside Redu- is reduced very significantly. In fact, major part of your information input you are taking through the eyes. So, if you keep your eyes closed, then this input is direct drastically reduced. So, there is much less work for the self to do. So, yes. self is likely to calm down. Yes. So, these are the kind of experiment which have been conducted. Now, what we are saying is that it is good. to begin with you know because your self is under the influence of the body so it is good to begin with you know to calm down your body to reduce the activity of the self right to calm down the self but then I, what we are saying is that while it is good to begin with right that is not the level at which you have to work on the time once you are able to calm down the self you have to start paying attention to the self and when you are able to see the self or the activity of the self then we can directly start working at the level of the activity of the self rather than every time starting from the body and then trying to control the body and then you know through that try to control the self so to begin with it may be useful but if you stuck to it if you get stuck to it it will become a barrier so this is what we are saying to begin with take help of your body your status of the body right kind of minimize this activity of the body this will help coming down the self self because now self has less things to do take care of but then if you have come down and you are now able to observe the self the activity of the self then your real work has started then your real work has started yes. then you have to start working with the self so for example you know <clears throat> if you look at this ashtang yoga which patanjali is talking about you know and in fact he says before this description of the path ashtang the eight limbs of yoga he is saying that you know he is giving a lot of descriptions before that for people who can work directly on this self and then this he said that if you cannot do it directly you know work with the self then this is the proposal for you and this proposal is that you know you have to work in eight steps but this is not the proposal for everyone he is giving lot of descriptions before coming to this and when and he says that if you cannot you know work at that those levels directly because you don't have the you know that kind of sanskar then for the common man for the average man you know here is the suggestion and that suggestion is in terms of this eight limbs of yoga 
and there he starts with you know how you have to keep with the, your behavior how you have to keep with your body and then how you have to keep with your you know uh, 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 body uh, body limbs and now you have to keep with the breathing the pranayam you know. so yam niyam asan pranayam these four things that he talks about and then he said it is all in external so let us go be, be you know within you know let's get to ourselves that is pratyahar and then three things has to be done this dharana dhyan samadhi that is deciding what to see what to observe then paying attention and then seeing the reality as it is this is the real task that we have to do but if you are not able to do this directly then there is a lot of preparation required and as a preparation you can do all that but what is happening is that since we are so stuck to the body that we most of the time get busy with this you know initial steps this initial steps so it is good to sit in a particular posture it may be useful to keep your eyes closed to begin with but this is not all that is you know that we have to do we have to ultimately you know start working at the level of self start looking at the self looking at the activity of the self looking at the lower activities of the self and looking at the higher activities of the self you know and how these higher activities you know can be activated in itself and once these higher activities are activated how this can you know kind of guide the lower activities of the self that in mind of the self all this we have to work on sir because i ex- experience this uh, calmness comes from the meditation sir so that's so i prefer this sir yeah but what is this meditation has to be understood sir whether this meditation is just sitting in a particular posture and keeping your eyes closed no sir or is something much more than that yes much more than that yes sir regarding so this all this we'll have to understand as we go along you know this is just the beginning sir just the beginning this is the lecture number 7 of first course sir right sir yes at least three levels of courses which we have to go through sir sir regarding this uh, the role of the um, the music in the in the in the, in the, the impact of, on the brain sir sir so is it uh, sir uh, Uh, has a yeah, relevant... music music has a, is a physical phenomena <laughs> in fact um, this is what i'm saying now all this are you know we are we will have to get into the detail there is a difference between the music and the songs with music music yes. is physical in nature and it will have effect on the body which is physical in nature right right sir where is the songs has both music and the meaning of the words so the songs will have effect on the body in terms of music which is a physical phenomena and it will also have effect or likely to have effect on the self you know, because these words in the song may have meaning which can be interpreted by the self so very interesting you know all these things we have to understand these mantras became very important because of this that it has music it has sound which may be useful for the body it has some meaning so it is useful for the self and for the imagination part of the self but it is also pointing towards certain basic reality so
so it has some importance for your higher activity of the self that is knowing so you have to know that reality which is being indicated by this so you are engaging the body you are engaging the lower part of the self lower activity of the self you are engaging the higher activity of the self you know, all that is combined Yeah. Ganesh ji i just had one observation that uh, what yeah. rabindra ji was saying um namaste madam actually what uh, i uh, explore is that uh, in the medical also i have seen that music therapy and in, in, on almost in the sessions are also some flute the music flow flute is going on and um, and that has a impact of obviously in in the mind also so that was uh, no, wanted to uh, comment uh, just uh, one right. observation right. That i had regarding yes, meditation and music yes, so madam. even for that most people who even teach meditation they say it's uh, it might be okay to start with music when you uh, uh, are learning to meditate but i think practically everybody says uh, not to keep music there um, what ganesh ji was mentioning that uh, something to start with but then you have to go beyond that Yes, so, yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yeah. That's all I had to say, Ganesh. Yes. So you have to begin with music. Then you have to go to songs. You know, or you know, kavita, which is also mentioning some meaning to it. You know, not only the sound only. And then so, you have to go to this. You know. Oh, uh, what I uh, explore is that uh, actually uh, during the CESIP program. i was uh, impressed on this uh, meditation and uh, this, uh, this 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 uh, the songs and i also i have developed some lyrics and composed it and they have uh, placed in the youtube sir and that gives a lot of pleasure in me sir satisfaction also sir <laughs> sir yeah yeah sir. that that i so these are these years. are useful tools but ultimately they should all add up for me to work at the level of self and there also work at the level of higher activities of the self yes sir that probably we'll talk about sometime you know yes. maybe not even in this course because this course is a very preliminary you know foundational course but yes. the next course you know which is talking more in detail about the harmony in human being you know and understanding the human being particularly understanding the self there we will be able to talk about this higher activities of the self So ultimately, we have to start working there. Then all this will be useful, meaningful. Sir. To have music and to have songs and to have mantras and all this. Thank you, But sir. But they are all add to you, you know. Sir. Add to you for your self verification, self exploration. Okay. Yes. Full, sir. Namaste, sir. Yes.